What's going on everyone? Hey, today I want to give you the cliff notes for what I think is a terrific camping trip to the Central Coast. The destination is Montana de Oro State Park and specifically the campground is called Islay Campground. So here we have LA here and this is our destination here. So it's about a four hour drive and there are two ways to get there. You can either go up the coast, the 101, which is typically a little more congested, or you can take the 5 north and then cut across. One route is more scenic and the other route is typically a little more expedient. It basically boils down to would you rather go through Santa Barbara or Bakersfield? I will leave that up to you. I suggest listening to your navigation app. Now me, I chose the coastal route this time and to me the scenery is just beautiful. I'm going to abbreviate Montana de Oro as MDO going forward, and let me zoom in here. Now, as you know, I do a little bit of kayak fishing, so the big draw for me is the incredible fishing off the Central Coast. But, in the Central Coast, the oceanic conditions are typically a little more rough and more consequential. This weekend was one of those weekends and I could not fish, but that's okay because there are many other things to do here. So let's get the campground logistics out of the way. As I mentioned, the campground is called Islay Campground and I'm going to zoom in here. Now here's the deal with really popular campgrounds and this one certainly qualifies. You have to book way out in advance, and I'm talking like six months out. If you don't, you will not get a campsite. And I will leave links to everything down below in the description. Now when choosing your campsite, put Google Earth to good use. So there are obvious factors like outhouses and the proximity to them. You don't want to set up shop right next door to them, but at the same time, you don't want to be too far away. But the one factor that I think most people miss is shade. Most of us do our camping in the summertime, and even if it's 70 something degrees and you don't have any shade, that can be a real bummer. So go ahead and zoom in and pick a campsite that's got shade. Okay, let's move on to the things to do with your family. I have a video that kind of details how to fish uh, this area. But this video is going to focus in on what you can do with your family. So here's the campground and most of the family oriented stuff can be done here in this, what do you want to call it, lagoon or estuary. So we drove our cars to this part of the lagoon. I'm going to zoom in here. Okay, right here is a kayak rental outfit called a kayak shack. And there's also some kind of a museum here as well. The kayak rental fees were 20 bucks for the first hour and 10 bucks per hour thereafter. So the launch here, as you might imagine, is pretty simple. And then what you can do is rent the kayak. And because this water is very, very calm and not subject to the swells of the open ocean, you can kayak across the lagoon and land here and then hang out at the beach or you can just explore the lagoon. If you have your own kayak, you can bypass the rental place and drive your car to here, this area. Okay, it's not really a sandy beach and parking is limited, but if you get there early, you'll be okay. So if you're wondering if you can fish the lagoon, I think the answer is yes. We were hanging out here and we did see a small boat fishing and I think I also saw a bait barge as well. On top of that, there was plenty of bird life around here. Here we are, Moro Bay Lagoon. I'm not sure what it's called, but look, I mean, there's bait in here. We got pelicans, we got cormorants. Yeah, yeah, there's life. We got Moral Rock in the background. And I'm being flogged by Regina, who is a cyst that I keep paddling. Hey, what's going on? 
if you do decide to paddle all the way across and land on this dune, you basically have this dune area and beach area all to yourselves. So you could pack a lunch and hang out here all day and the kids can hunt for sand dollars and etc. If you want to hang closer to the campground, I'm going to zoom back out. There's plenty to do here as well. You can check out the tide pools with the kids. Now, the trick to the tide pools is this. Go to tidesforfishing.com and time your arrival at the tide pools to coincide with low tide. Now, it's going to fluctuate, but ideally you want to see a low number like negative 1.5 or negative 2.0. And that means that it's going to be extreme low tide and the kids are going to see all kinds of underwater life that would otherwise be underwater. Beyond that, there are great hiking trails that follow the coastline. And I know for a fact that there are plenty of really nice mountain biking trails because we were able to see mountain bikers from our campsite. So tons to do here and it, a great experience for the family. A couple other important notes, the raccoons up there are absolutely out of control. So make sure you have all your food under complete lockdown. Okay, that about wraps it up for this video. I'm going to leave you with a family portrait that one of the kids drew. Apparently this is me in a kayak and I'm holding a giant bottle. And God bless me, I need several of these things to deal with her. But I'm hoping I can get away with this because it is Father's Day weekend coming up and I can say these things with minimal consequence. Hey, <laughs> you know, I'm just kidding. Enjoy your families, enjoy your Father's Day weekend. As always, get out there, have fun, be safe, and we will see you soon. Bye for now.